Ladies and gentlemen, this is T-Pain. Welcome to this episode of the Iwo Jima Boat Show. Holler. I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! Take a good hard look at the motherfucking boat! Good evening and welcome to episode 4 of the Iwo Jima Boat Show, where thankfully our viewership is growing, but nowhere near the ratings of any Tyler Perry movie. I'm MC2 Anucci. And I'm MC1 Abbott. Tonight we have another entertaining episode for you, but first, let's recap what we've gone over since our last episode. On Sunday, February 22nd, CSAT held a talent show in the hangar bay, which gave various crew members the opportunity to showcase their talents. Machinist mate Fireman Ote and Quartermaster Seaman Cooper performed as a duet and won with a perfect score of 40. Afterwards, V3 personnel set up a large movie screen while the IC set up a projector for NASCAR fans as the Daytona 500 was aired on AFN. Last weekend, rapper T-Pain arrived here to perform for crew members on the flight deck. Chief Lingo has more on that story. The USS Iwo Jima flew aboard a special guest for the crew recently during their deployment to the 5th Fleet Area of Operations. T-Pain was flown aboard thanks to MWR, the USO, and Navy Entertainment for a concert and autograph signing. But first, T-Pain and his friends were given a snack and treated to a quick tour of the ship before heading to the hangar bay to sign autographs and take pictures with sailors and Marines aboard the Iwo. While the hangar bay was busy with the excitement of T-Pain's visit, a handful of sailors worked diligently alongside T-Pain's engineers to ready the flight deck for the show. After the prep was finished and autographs were signed, T-Pain went topside to pose for a few pictures with the working party that assisted in the stage build before the start of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, T-Pain. The first concert T-Pain has done aboard a forward-deployed naval vessel meant a lot to the musician. Um, actually, my father-in-law is a 30-year uh, chief Air Force, and uh, my wife was a staff sergeant Air Force. So uh, we, I've been, I've been dealing with the military for a while. So uh, you know, and uh, you know, just just thinking about the the opportunities that have been made possible by the military and by you know just by all our you know men and women. Uh, I have to, you know, it's, it's necessary, you know what I'm saying? We can't say that we've been to the top or been on the top without recognizing the people that give us the freedom to have a top, you know, because we could be in some of these countries where nobody's allowed to be on top, you know? So, <laughs> so you have to recognize the men and women that make it possible to be on top and have a top. Teddy Pain going in on the burst because I never been defeated and I won't stop now. Hey. Hands up, keep him in the sky for my homies that are making them my folks like down. Hey. I never went nowhere, hey. but they saying Teddy's back. Hey. Put him on that auto tune and I'm going to drink this new one. Yeah. From the USS Iwo Jima, I'm Chief Mass Communications Specialist, Nicholas Lingo. And now that we've covered the shipboard events, let's go over tonight's rundown. Tonight's Work Center Spotlight is the day in the life of a machinery repairman courtesy of MCSN Weatherwax. Our next story comes from the 24th Mew as Lance Corporal Zunin gives us an inside look at the Aviation Ordnance Technicians of Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron 365. Next up, we have a public service announcement which discusses the importance of washing our hands. Then, the QMs take over once again with another episode of Fun with Flags. Then, MC1 Hebner does his Man on the Streets interview where this time he finds out what are some favorite all-time movies from various crew members. Finally, we'll stimulate the mind with another segment of Words with Wallum. And since the underlying theme is about movies, we'll be peppering in some reenactments of our favorite movies. The answers will be at the end of the episode when credits roll. 
It all starts now on episode 4 of the Iwo Jima Boat Show. Every department works together aboard the USS Iwo Jima to ensure the mission to defend America's interests is met full force with the strength and fortitude only the Navy and Marine Corps team can provide. During deployments aboard one of the United States Navy's most versatile platforms, this amphibious assault ship and her crew morph into a warfighting machine capable of launching an attack on land, in the air, and at sea. It takes a well-trained crew to ensure the effectiveness of the USS Iwo Jima. This is their story, one shop at a time. For U.S. Navy ships, maintenance is a routine part of every day. Everything from nuts and bolts to whole pieces of equipment are replaced constantly to keep everything running smoothly. While at sea, ordering new parts isn't always a possibility when an immediate fix is needed. That is where the machinery repairmen come into play. Because if something does break down and it's not available in supply, it can't be shipped, you know, mailed out to us right away, we're not able to go physically get it, they'll come down here and if we have the capabilities and the means to do it, we'll make it. Um, so I feel like we're really important. If it breaks and we can fix it, we'll do it. Meticulous care is taken by the MRs to perfectly match up a request with a product. If sizing is so much as a hair off, the part is useless and has to be remade or brought back to make adjustments. Machining parts can take as little as a few hours and larger jobs as long as a week. We have such a wide range of different things to do. It could be anything from measuring something that takes you know, a minute to uh, two, three days. It just depends. You know, you stay up till, till they tell you to leave or you're too tired to work. Go to your rack, you know, get some sleep, come back and work on it the next day. That's not all the time, that's you know, every so often, but a minute to a week, you know, it could be any time frame. It's such a, it's such a, it's such a big possibility. The MR's tools are a wide variety of measuring instruments and heavy equipment designed to grind down thick pieces of metal, shaving off layers bit by bit until the exact length and width are reached. The fruits of their labor can be seen every day in the bits and pieces that hold the ship together. Reporting from the USS Iwo Jima, this is Mass Communication Specialist Seaman Megan Weatherwax. That's a clean wet. Ah. Hey there, Iwo Jima. My name is Agent 2 Ansel, and I'm here to talk to you about hand washing. Hand washing is one of the most important things that we can do in our daily activities to prevent us from getting sick and to prevent the spreading of germs. Now how easy way to wash your hands is first what we're gonna do we're gonna get our hands wet then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lather our hands up. So make sure you get a copious amount of soap and spread the soap on the back side of your hands all the way down the wrist, forearms. Now you want to scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds good thing to make sure you know you got 20 seconds is to sing happy birthday twice to yourself, not out loud. You want to make sure you get in between your fingers, get under the nails, and the back of the hands. Next 
thing you do is rinse. And dry your hands off. And that's it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I'm, I'm properly washing my hands. Happy birthday to you. Uh, I said sing it to yourself, not out loud. Ooh, that looks like a Christmas tree. Why are you smiling so much? I love smiling. Smiling's my favorite. Your favorite? Good afternoon, Iwo Jima. I'm your very handsome, unofficially ranked petty officer anchorman, QMS and Summer Hour. And welcome to another segment of Fun with Flags. You're an unofficial petty officer because you haven't officially passed the third class exam. But anyways. I'm your very lovely anchor lady, Kim Sue Campbell. Very lovely. You know, Campbell, lying on TV isn't good for our ratings. Yeah, Summer Hour? Neither is being short. But in other news, let's head to our weatherman, QM1, to learn more about the weather flag. It's gonna rain. Great, Oprah Winfrey's hair. You gotta love that enthusiasm. But can you please tell us more about the weather flag, QM1? It means it's gonna rain. Summer Hour. He's worse at this news announcing than you are. Were you the one who trained him? The storm warning flag is a red square flag with a black square center. It means 45 knots of wind or greater. It means it's gonna rain. I definitely think we need to hire another weatherman and another anchor lady. <clears throat> Today in sports news, we're going to talk to Q3 Cheshire Irvine, we can never really tell which one it is, no, to tell us about the golf flag. This is the golf flag. It has absolutely nothing to do with sports, but it is used to indicate the guide ship during an unrep. Like for instance, the Falcons coach should have guided his team to a better play. I mean, why would you throw the ball when? You gotta love a female's enthusiasm as perspective when it comes to sports. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just the female's perspective that we love when it comes to sports. We females think it's hilarious when guys are talking about sports and they don't know what it means. But what about those puppies? Those are some cute puppies. <laughs> You're right about that, Camo. There's nothing cuter than puppies playing football. Well, that's it for today. In Iwo Jima, when you're having a bad day, just remember these three words. Honor, courage, and commitment. Stay classy, Iwo Jima. Skyrockets in flight. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Just watching TV. Why are you so sweaty? Just watching cops. Get your feet off the furniture. All right, so I'd like to remind everyone that the Academy Awards were last week. Did you know the Academy Awards were on? Birdman won Best Picture, and so did Big Hero 6. We have them both. Check your local listings. Anyway, if the crew members were given the power to give the award for Best All-Time Movie, who would they pick? Let's go find out. All right, so I'm asking people on the Iwo Jima. First off, what's your name? DCFN Gastelum. All right, so I'm asking people what their favorite all-time movie is. That's a hard one. I mean, well, what's your favorite genre? Horror. Horror flick? Okay, so you, would you pick a horror flick as your favorite all-time movie? Uh, I'm going to have to go back on that. I'm going to say comedy. The Interview. The Interview. Uh, Okay, it's a pretty new movie, so that you would already you would already label that as the best all-time movie. So it's, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, the death sequence is really cool in that movie. So if you haven't seen it yet, yeah, the interview. We're, we're gonna we're gonna knock on the tool issue door here. 
see who's all in here. Hello, I want to. I want. I want some tools issued to me. How you doing? This is this is one McSwain. Right here. Hey, how y'all doing? What's your favorite all-time movie? I like the uh, Antoine Fisher story. Antoine Fisher story. That's a good one. Recently, just saw the uh, the the uh, Chris Cow movie, American Sniper. I like. Oh, that. okay, okay. So that that would already be your favorite all-time movie, American Sniper. One vote for American Sniper. There you go. That's a good. That's a good one. We're just trying to. We're just trying to get people's answers. We want answers. We want the truth. Oh, right, here we go. Here we go. Let's. I. We got one of supplies hardest working people right here. Look at that. Look at that thousand watt smile. Look at that smile. Isn't that an awesome smile? If the Oscar panel of judges gave you the power to pick which movie would be the best all time movie award, who would you give that movie to? Who would you give that award to? What movie? The Notebook. The Notebook. The Notebook? Really? I think we're done here. Basically, I'm going around asking people if they were given the power to give the Oscar to the best movie of all time, who would you give that award to? Probably Denzel Washington, Training Day. Training Day. Ah, King Kong ain't got nothing on me. Why, why that movie? He just did. He had everything in that movie. He actually won best. He actually won best actor Oscar in that movie as well. There it is. Yeah. There you go. So Training Day. That's a good pick. All right. Thanks. So. If the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences picked you to pick the best all-time movie award, who would you give that award to? Oh, God. Mm. I'm trying to think of the actor's name. I can't remember it. We'll do, uh... It's the movie with that guy <laughs> and that girl. No, we'll do, we'll do, uh, Rus we'll do Russell Crowe and Les Mis. Les Mis. Now, you know a lot of people kind of pan his, uh, his singing abilities in that movie. So why do you pick that one? I think he portrayed, I've read the book and I think he portrayed the character really well, regardless of his singing ability. Or lack thereof, right? Exactly. So, a lot, yeah, a lot of people didn't really like his singing ability in that movie, but you kind of, you know, overlooked that and then kind of, you kind of praised it, right? Yeah. Haters gonna hate. Haters gotta hate and ain't is gotta ain't. That's basically what A.T. Johnson's saying. So, Russell Crowe and Les Mis, yes. Best movie of all time. That's a tough one. Uh, I think my personal favorite of all time would be Seven. Seven. Ooh, that's a real dark movie. Why that movie? Uh, it's just, it's always been something that interested me, being in law enforcement. You know, you got the, the murder, drama, crime, suspense, so it's a good movie. Uh, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman were great actors in it. So. And Kevin Spacey with the twist at the end, the box in the head. It's a great movie. Uh, I, I can't argue with that. That's, that's actually a good pick. So, Seven. Chief McLean picks Seven. All right. I would have to give it to uh, Dancers with Wolves uh, because it did make a bunch of other uh, rip-off movies later on, like uh, The Last Samurai and Avatar. So to me, that started it all. Dancers with Wolves, Kevin Costner, 1990. That was a good movie, by the way. Very good movie. So he even do he even swept the Oscars that year. He won Best Actor, Best Director, Best Picture. So yeah, that was, a, that was actually a good movie. So yeah, that was a good choice. Why why that movie? Why that movie? <laughs> It's my favorite movie, I guess. Did you cry at that movie? Yeah, like You're such a chick. And now, it's time for Words with Wallum. Almost didn't see you there. Good evening, welcome to Words with Wallum. I'm MCSN Wallum, I'll be your host tonight. I'm here to expand your vernacular horizons. Today's word is thespian. Its origin is of late 17th century English and is an adjective meaning actor or actress and relating to drama in the theater. The root word is from Thespis, who was a Greek 
dramatic poet from the 6th century BC who is regarded as the founder of Greek tragedy. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. And end scene. Chief, we don't need any more thespians on this show. This has been Words with Wallum. Thanks for learning with us. And this is how I really spent the weekend. Thanks for watching another episode of the Iwo Jima Boat Show. In two weeks time, we'll have episode five. And have a good night. Happy birthday, Thank sir! You.